Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back with another stream of Live of Hearthstone. <laughs> Didn't say that right at all. Today is February 7th. Uh, we've got a tavern brawl to do, and we've got five bun dungeon boss runs, and that'll be kind of fun. And then Priest and Secrets probably can do both of those pretty quickly. Uh, I guess to start off with, we'll take this, play the priest, choose this, and go. And then 10 secrets can easily be done with my hunter secret deck. Hmm. Don't tell me we are already into job listings. I don't think so. I'm not sure I'm going to get two episodes today. It looks like, according to your gamer, that Pokemon Go is going to get some in-game story quests. Uh, that's not a terrible thought, certainly. Hmm. See, I'll hold on the shadow form. Uh, inherently, though, the problem with Pokemon Go for me is that I just don't go outside. I don't go to different places. And... I don't know how you could play that game without cheating a lot. Um, like, I would be happy with playing Pokemon Go if I could, like, stand in place and walk on a treadmill. But it, if it requires me to actually go outside, that's, that's too much. Let's see. Hmm. Let's do this, yeah. Hmm. And I imagine the story quests are not going to be anything great or long. Uh, Gamma Sutra has Sega's sales and profits slip at Sega despite an increase in physical sales, which explains why. Sega fired a bunch of people for the Dead Rising series. I think that was Sega, anyways. Sega Sammy. Uh, uh, what was it? Sega's name comes from, I think, a combination of two other names I, I heard. But... I don't remember. What's this do? Restores three health. Hmm. Uh, net sales. Anyways, moving on. Net sales dipped eight point seven percent year over year to two hundred sixty billion yen, or roughly two point three eight billion. Where, while profits fell by 62% to roughly 126 million. And half of their money fell. Like, how did that happen? Uh, well, I guess the real question is what in the world has Sega been doing that, would eat, that they deserve? Uh, deserve even that much. Um, despite the overall decline, Sega Entertainment Division, which houses its video game operations. So, honestly, Sega could be losing other money from its insurance companies or its health resorts or whatever other businesses that Sega runs in Japan. Because they, Japanese companies have very weird horizontal monopolies slash duopolies it's not as bad as south korea and samsung where samsung runs the grocery stores and and like everything and employs maybe as much as 80 percent of the entire population of south korea uh, but there there is definitely some things that don't make the most amount of sense uh in 
how they let companies do so many varied things and don't force them to break up. Where, but to be fair, the United States really hasn't done any monopoly breaking in a very long time also. Uh, although maybe the U.S. sometimes stops monopolies from forming. Uh, the upward shift was driven by sharp rise in physical game sales with Sega selling 14.28 mil million copies from quarter one to quarter three. Uh, the company credited the recent releases of Sonic Forces, uh, Ryuga Gotaku Kawami 2, which is Fist of the New North Star 2, and Football Manager 28 for providing the bump. So, again, I guess what they were doing is they were, they were making a... They were making a Fist of the North Star game and they were making a um, football manager game <laughs> let's see Sega's digital game roster struggled to match those performances and digital sales actually fell by 17% year over year honestly yeah I would imagine a lot of sales of a Sonic game are going to be bought by parents who think Sonic is a good game Sonic Forces in particular, and Football Manager 2018 might be physical copies because of pre-orders, and uh, Fist of the North Star 2 might be physical copies because of pre-orders and, and big bundles. Let's see. The Japanese outfit blamed the slowdown on the sluggish Japanese smartphone market, which it suggests is now dominated by a few key players who can afford to invest more time and money into high quality releases. So Sega apparently wants to push very heavily into the cell phone market. Let's see. I've just lost. We'll have to try that one again. Even so, the firm has still talked up robust performance of new digital titles like Magic Re Record, Pula Magic Mo Madoka, and Magica Side Story. Okay, so. So that's all one game Magic Record, colon, Pula Magi, Madoka, Magica Side Story, which. This is an, that's an anime based game of Ma, uh, Madoka Magica, uh, which is kind of an interesting anime that I've recently watched, uh, where you think at the beginning it's going to be a story about just little anime girls becoming magical girls, and in the end, it's more of a deep, thoughtful, uh, playing on that thought to say what would life really be like for a little girl who doesn't have that much emotional uh, maturity to become a fighter against some enemy and potentially risking their life uh, day after day in some very difficult uh, deadly struggle. Uh, and there's there's more twists to that, but the main character, uh, Madoka, doesn't even really spend, for the TV series, the vast majority of the time as a magical girl. She spends nearly all of this first TV series, because there's a TV series, then there's two recap movies that are just a TV series edited slightly differently and then the third movie is new content so i would particularly recommend people watch the tv series then skip to the third movie uh and you won't really miss anything um but yeah for the for the almost all of the the tv series she she's just a little girl uh, around other magical girls Let's see. They're also pleased with their Fantasy Star Online 2 game. 
Hortensia Saga. I haven't heard of that one. And Poyo Poyo Quest. Poyo Poyo being one half of Poyo Poyo Tetris. But I imagine Poyo Poyo Quest is a little bit different. Looking ahead, Sega believes its entertainment content division will finish the year in good health and expects net sales and operating income to hit uh, 1.96 billion and uh, 1. 127.8 million by the end of the fiscal year. Uh, so, uh, this article is sort of only focused around the video game aspect of Sega Sammy. Like, it's also possible in the same press conference or shareholders meeting that they said uh, they overall plan to lose a ton of uh, a ton of money. But whatever. I named a lot of Japanese games there, and none of them really come over to the West, and none of them really have my. Uh, interest Let's see I'm trying to look at what Poyo Poyo quest is it's a puzzle game so yeah I think it's let's see if I can go back and look at images hmm Let's see, the start of your turn, draw three cards, I'll take that. Hmm. Play that one, and that one, and that one. Yeah. Poyo Poyo is, from best I can tell, Poyo Poyo Quest is a gym matching game without the Tetris element so the pieces don't fly around it's more of a swiping thing hmm a lot of the images are the characters though not images of the game so I could be really wrong hmm Sega does have a kind of uh, large amount of old games that if they just would do something good with them uh, you'd be in a better position um, let's just attack the face and we might as well do that and then the turn uh, yeah it was Capcom not Sega though that, that fired the people for Dead Rising. Capcom and Sega are very similar Japanese companies. All the Japanese companies are kind of hurting to create new IP and they're they're trying to lean on their old things. They're trying to to focus only on the Japanese market and it's I would argue not working very well. Let's see. Start of your turn, summon a demon from your hand. Seriously? I don't have a demon. Ah, oh, that sucks. We'll do that. Has plus three attack on your opponent's turn. So that'll make it a ten seven. New Jersey is now imposing its own net neutrality rules on ISPs. That's just one more state in the list of states that are going to impose net neutrality rules to the point where it's not going to be worth it for people to try to, to not have net neutrality all throughout the United States. However, for the rest of the world, you're still going to uh, probably see internet service providers doing whatever they want discover a demon this will be interesting I'm gonna take this and let's see what happens well 
first thing let's attack with this and see what happens and attack with this and see what happens and then I could play that card but I don't see reason to uh, Shadow of the Colossus fans are working to solve a mysterious new PS4 puzzle after fans have been searching years for the last big secret in the original Shadow of the Colossus the PS4 remaster comes with a mystery of own Outside the 16 Colossus to defeat as part of the main story, the original had two sets of optional collectibles to find fruit, trees, and lizard tails, both of which uh, are also feature in the remake. And I think the, not too many people found that out. Getting the lizard tails increases your grip. Fruit trees, I believe, increases your... Uh, 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 health, I think. The remaster has introduced a third type of collectible, which has been dubbed enlightenments or gold coins by players, which glow and sparkle when found. Unlike fruit trees and lizard ta tails, which increase your health or stamina gauge, respectively, the purpose of the coins is currently unknown. There isn't a trophy associated with finding them, nor are they mentioned in any part of the game stats summary found in the pause menu. However, once you've found the first coin, you will uh, they are logged in the bottom corner of the map screen as seen as the number increases with sequential finds. How many of these collectibles are there? A video by PS4. Uh, trophies theorizes that there are 79 based on the message in the end credits thanking the Nomad Colossus and the 79 Steps of Enlightenment. Hmm take control of that and I will just attack here and that's all I really need to do hmm. so hmm. there's also an Easter egg for uh, another team Ico game that you can find off a beaten path I really, really wish Shadow of the Colossus would come to PC, but I don't know. Like, it's not going to. And so, or I highly suspect it's not going to. Maybe in 10 or 20 years, the emulators for PS3 and PS4 and PS2 will be good enough that I could play it. But then at that point, I'm just playing a game through an emulator and it's not accessible and easy enough for purchase uh, for the viewers so I'm not really doing anybody any favors uh, they silenced this guy so they kept him destroy all minions with two or less attack um, let's see this and this and this and that and that I could also have played this next turn I probably will hmm I suppose I did play a game where you fought a bunch of Colossus it was a 2D game by Digital Devolver. I played it about a year ago. It, it was pretty cool. It, using bow and arrow technology. Uh, but it, it's not. It certainly isn't Shadow of the Colossus though. That's really what I'd like to play. Of course I did buy... Shadow of the Colossus, the original PS3 version or the PS2 version, and never played it, so I guess that's my own fault. Hmm. There's a very anime looking game called Closers that's uh, an episodic anime action RPG bursting with spectacular battles. It's rated mostly positive, and it's free to play. 
So, like, I, I don't see any real reason why I'd ever review it. Um, unless I just start running out of money for games. But, whatever. Restore 12 health to a friendly character. Discover a card. Demon. And... Go ahead and kill this. Heal this. And attack here. So, there's this game... Uh, called Them's Fighting Herds that's coming out this month. And what's funny about this game, uh, it's being covered by Rock Paper Shotgun, is that it originally was a My Little Pony fan game. So, somebody started making a fighting game with My Little Pony characters as a fan game. And then, I guess, they got good enough at it that they thought, let's make this a real game, let's take out the copyright infringement that's going to get us in trouble. And so now I am looking at a trailer of ponies and a llama and a cow, it looks like, fighting. And it it works. It, it's probably not Street Fighter. It's probably not Blaze Blue. It's probably not any of the good ones. But it's got... Enough of a gameplay and enough of a silly experience that it works. Let's try this again. There's some challenges or training modes. There's at least six characters, I would say, here to play as. Hmm. So it's coming out February 22, and it's on Steam already. Like, that is going in my list. And it's being published by Humble Bundle, which apparently Humble Bundle, in its being purchased by, I believe, IGN bought it. Uh, apparently, the, their new thing is that they're going to become this publisher under this brand while uh, IGN is going to have both the Humble Store and Fanatical, which is the new name of the store. Hmm. But yeah, this this is a funny enough game to, to play. How much is it? Uh, no price yet. Hopefully it doesn't come out as a $60 game because for a goof, I don't think I could... I could justify that much, but but if it's a fifteen dollars to five dollar game, uh, that might work. Let's do this. Do this, and then turn. Hmm. Let's move on, I guess. Hmm. Let's see what else. Let's go ahead and play this. And discover another character. Yeah, this is not really nautical. Remember that game, Middle Earth Shadow of War? 
It's getting new story expansion and big free features updated. I'm not sure anybody really wants to. Uh, anybody wants to play that game anymore, even if you have completely overlooked and are cool with the microtransactions and everything else. Like, I, I still don't know if anybody cares enough. Let's hit this and just go ahead and attack this guy hmm. like today's paid story DLC is accompanied by a heavy free update to the Shadow War players adding a number of new features and quality of life improvements to the game top of the list and enhancements are uh, enhancements to the nemesis system, introducing new traits and behaviors to orc captains. These include tunnel at which lets orcs. Uh, see, here's the problem: is that whole nemesis system was not implemented well in the sequel. It was this amazing thing that everybody really loved in the original game, and people just did not even have any relation to whoever was supposed to be the war arch nemesis in the second game uh, it seemed very random uh photo mode nobody's gonna care that new talon and ethereal player skins uh new player start page making it easier to keep track of your progress and a new field of view options like yeah way too little too late way too little too late Hmm. Let's just go ahead and hit this and that. Hmm. And that. And there we go. Moving on with the news. Hyrule Warriors uh, Definitive Edition has its first character trailer. So, uh, Hyrule Royals, Royals, I think was on the Nintendo Wii U. So the Definitive Edition is coming out for the Switch on March 22nd in Japan and in spring at some point in North America and in Europe. Uh, Hyrule Royals is a Warriors game like Dynasty Warriors, uh, but with Zelda characters. Personally, I'd like to see a Zelda game that is more around wisdom and solving puzzles uh, that instead of uh, instead of yet another game that's around Link. Hmm. And then half of these characters are side characters in very specific Zelda games that I haven't played, so I can't actually tell you the name of them. And they work well enough in a Dynasty Warriors game because all you need in a Dynasty Warrior game is the ability to do some kind of area attack. Uh, what's funny about this trailer is besides Link, all the other characters I'm seeing if maybe there's a Ganon character in there, all the other characters are female. <laughs> like the Zelda series has been so heavily dominant female characters. Like why why can't we have a female led led game? Hmm. Like. Oh, I had a great idea for a game. It turns out that there is a Wii or yeah, a Wii version of Punch Out that I didn't realize existed and I was watching uh a, an old games done quick of of a speedrun of it. Awesome games done quick. Um which okay. Uh it was all right. 
So I was thinking, yeah, there, there is definitely room for a PC version of a game sort of like Punch-Out, but you could definitely do a different spin on it and make it uh, a lot more interesting. PC Gamer has a review for a game called Dandara, D-A-N-D-A-R-A. -A. Uh, it's rated 68, so it's not particularly the greatest. Uh, it doesn't look that great either, so I'm going to skip this article. Oh, yes, that reminds me. So, the thing, uh, I want to see if I can not get into a huge rant on this one, but I guess I need to look that up before I can talk about it. So, I'll talk about that story later. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to get information wrong. So, I'll get back to that one. That, that's a tease. Hmm. Hmm. Turn there. A game called Song of Memories for the Switch has been delayed to spring. So your standard Japanese games being delayed. I guess maybe in Japan it doesn't matter. Like, if you're going to make a game and it's only going to be released in Japan, and then you know you're going to delay it, maybe the Japanese people just don't care. Uh, Song of Memories from the one screenshot looks like it's a visual novel game. Hmm. The Western version it will be a release window outside of 2018. Uh, there's some rumors that CD Projekt Red, I need to win one of these, so let's quit playing as the priest and let's instead play somebody who will have some secrets, like the hunter. Uh, like, there, there's rumors that CD Projekt Red is going to be at E3. I don't know what they can really show other than a trailer. Uh, I just don't think Cyberpunk 27.7 is anywhere close to that, to being close to being announced as far as a, a release date or anything. If it is, it's going to be a really short game and people are going to be disappointed. Uh, Rocket League may get competitive snow day and hoops. I kind of don't know what each of those are, but I imagine that is a mode. Hmm. So, since I'm not interested enough to find out what those are, I'm going to move forward. Um, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle is going to have Yang Xiao Long and Blake and Yang are going to be free of charge. So, you're getting... two characters somehow that seemed that sounded like that was three characters I that that was not phrased in a way that sounded like a uh, Wait a minute. Did it just pick something for me? Because I ran out of time? Uh, I still think, though, that Blazeblade Cross Tag Battle is charging a little bit more for its DLC characters than it should. Hmm. Uh, I'm not going to read this article, but Game of Sutra has an article called Examining the Role of Outsourcing Plays in Modern Game Development. Uh, it plays a huge role, and probably not to the benefit of very many people. Uh, outsourcing, and in general, just the any kind of job security or or job being treated well at your job in video game programming and development is it's a more than most people get. Let's see. Why do I have this game?
Hmm. There's a game called The Red Solstice that is free for 48 hours. So... You can get it and then you have to buy it again. Hmm. And on January 15th, it was currently free on Humble Bundle, so... Like, I don't know... I don't know if the free, if you get it on Humble... Humble Bundle is free for 48 hours, or if it's free forever. Hmm. So, yeah, maybe I'll just install this just to make sure... And if it uninstalls after 48 hours from now, who cares? The, the, these free weekends are getting more and more often. Uh, the, they're happening a lot more than they, I think they should. And it's confusing things. He's stealing all my secrets, and I'm stealing all his cards. Hmm. Maybe that's part of the reason why I can't win, is everybody's stealing everybody else's cards. Uh, Fail Better Games has laid off some employees, and Sunless Skies is delayed. The funny thing about Sunless Skies, though, and this is a PC game article, so this is very appropriate, is Sunless Skies has been paying for advertisement almost assuredly under the table, you know, not being very obvious about it, because PC Gamer talks about Sunless Skies all the time, and there's no real reason to be talking about it as much as you are. Uh, Each time he casts a spell this turn. Hmm. Let's see. Attack. And attack. And attack. There we go. Um, the studio said the game will ship, but it's taking more a more cautious approach in the future. Sunless Skies doesn't look like a game worth playing. It never really has. It's gotten way too much coverage. It's in early access right now. It was kickstarted. Um... Let's see if there's anything here that says they've been forced to lay off four employees uh, and they only had 11 in total. So so they basically kickstarted this game that doesn't look that good it, and they had 11 people working off that Kickstarter money and they didn't finish the game in time and now they've laid off four people. Hmm. Uh, not super video game related, but PC Gamer does have an article, Reddit bans deepfake subreddit, the home of the fake Witcher porn, which I, I think that was only part of it. It was, it was fake porn of anybody, of anything, um, if you could get somebody's face out there. Um... There's... Probably several different legal arguments that would uh, come around to whether you could or couldn't put somebody's head on the body of a porn star in a porn video. If they're a celebrity, you could probably get away with it. If they're not a celebrity, you almost certainly couldn't uh, get away with it. Um, uh, if they're a semi-celebrity, 
you might not get away with it now, so that's weird. Also, from PC Gamer, vendors on the Amazon are now selling six packs of GPUs for cryptocurrency mining. So, buy six GPUs. Uh, that is crazy. Total insanity. Uh, all this cryptocurrency hogwash. Oh, man. I needed to do that first. Need more spells. You'd be wasting your money to buy a six pack of CPUs. PC Gamer. Man, I just had a whole list of PC Gamer articles. Partially because that's they tweet out their articles twice every time they have a new article. And they write three to five articles every day. Uh, but they have one that says, Why is Civilization Five still more popular than Civ Six? Comparing the two games, uh, I imagine this is some kind of in-depth perspective on it, and and there's some slight changes in Civ Six that players just didn't want to embrace, or they were too deep into playing Civ Five already to move over. Fortnite unveils new Valentine's event details, skins and crossbows. So, let's see. Fortnite Battle Royale mode will receive a selection of striking, vaguely Valentine's Day themed skin to have been revealed at present to be a B-winged Togo wearing statue man. And a kind of human sized female punk bear. And the crossbow also is coming. A new weapon is coming to Battle Royale as part of the update called the crossbow. It will allow you to hunt down your prey in the old fashioned way. Hmm. Choose a friendly minion, choose a friendly minion, deal two damage. Man, I can't play either one of these. So I'm going to play this instead. Hmm. I'm going to play this instead. I'm going to do this. That was about as good as I could get. Fortnite Save the World mode will also get some romance action with a special themed quest line, uh, which Epic calls a love story told the Fortnite way. Hmm. I heard Giant Bomb talking about Fortnite, the, the original Fortnite, people getting into the single player and expecting the Battle Royale mode so much that they're confused about what they're even supposed to be doing. Since Fortnite originally was more of a rust-ish game where you're building and constructing things. Uh, let's see. Oh, this attacks and kills a minion. Hmm. 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 You don't see a ton of Valentine's Day items in video games. Hmm. I suppose it's just not a ma major pro uh, priority and too much work for what is effectively a, a one day holiday for people who are romantically involved at the moment, which isn't going to include everybody. Hmm. Corrupt every minion. Let's go ahead and do this. Corrupt. And then discover. And then. Let's 
There we go. Amon um, Animoca Brands buys the Finnish Mobi mobile studio Tribe Flame for four hundred and thirty three thousand dollars. Hong Kong based publisher Animoca Brands. Uh, that's the. Uh, the move will see Animoca, which recently sold off its entire mobile game catalog, take complete control of the developer and its various game licenses and subsidiaries. That includes the popular Binge Bananas franchise, which is currently boasts 1.5 million monthly active users and pulls in $2.77 million in lifetime revenue over 107 million downloads. I've never heard of Binge bingy bananas as a series but i probably am not their target demographic either let's see what's this guy gonna do nothing nothing too too terrible three damage to minion hmm. tribe flame is the second finished game to be acquired by and a mocha brands following the purchase of tick bits back in July 2017 uh, moving forward tribe flame will co-locate with tick bits to enhance Animoca's development capability in Finland and will step up as the lead developer of their company's upcoming tower defense title crazy defense heroes so these are some real mobile games but it also is a little scary to to have a Hong Kong based which Hong Kong is theoretically part of China. Uh, if you ask China, it's definitely part of China. If you ask Hong Kong people, it's definitely not, or it doesn't want to be at least. Uh, but yet another basically Chinese company taking control of a Finnish company. So is this Finnish game moker maker going to stop making bingy bananas games that appealed I suppose to the Finnish and the West in general uh, and are they going to start making something that appeals more to the East uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, the Overwatch year of the dog event will feature a new capture the flag map and competitive season uh, so I guess unlike Valentine's Day, the Chinese New Year is something that a lot of games that are specifically focused around uh, MOBAs and things that are going to keep on happening uh, get these updates. Like we're in the year of the mammoth for Hearthstone and uh, they're, they're sort of doing a Chinese zodiac with different animals. It's the general idea. Hmm. Let's see. Let's just keep playing this. Hmm. Geez, I I might have a top meta game if I'm not careful. Put a copy of each friendly minion into your hand so if I play this and then play this next turn I could have four yeah, I'm just looking at a video of an overwatch person in charge of overwatch talking about the year of the dog so nothing nothing really there planet coaster has a map that I assume is a mod or uh, something like that uh, that is a working theme park and a playable version of Monopoly so copyright infringement definitely hmm. let's see Uh, in a weird way I don't think there really is a great Monopoly game on Steam so if the best way to play Planet Coast uh, Monopoly 
on Steam is to play Pan Planet Coast Coaster. I guess that's fine. Fine by me. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a Steam Workshop add-on. But how many people would actually find that? Hmm. I think we might go into post post game play today. Is it's just a little slow. Nobody's on the chat, so for basically a spammer troll, and uh, nothing's really happening. The Surge 2 in, was announced. It will be released in 2019. I thought the Surge wasn't a hugely, uh, hugely well received game. Let's see. If we can search the surge, like it, it is on Steam, it's rated very positive. Is this the one where you're fighting robots and you have robot bodies and you're stealing pieces of people's arms? I think it is. Like, I kind of get it. Like, I could see why people would like it. I just don't think it came out at the right time to catch enough people's attention. Deal three damage and do that. Hand of Fate 2 has an update that lets players make their own missions. Mod support in Steam Workshop have been added to the fantasy card game RPG. Uh, it kind of needed that like they were coming out too early with Hand of Fate 2 and now they need to buy as much time as they can before th there's any real demand or desire to make a Hand of Fate 3. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure they needed to make Hand of Fate 2 if they couldn't have just added some DLC and an expansion. Hmm. I'm on this page for a game. Why? How did I find this game? Hmm. It's got cutesy small, small number of pixels animation. It came out February seventh, twenty eighteen. So today, it's called Treasure Adventure World, and it only has six reviews. And I probably just saw that it was a new game out. Hmm. All the reviews might be fake. It's Wind Waker esque. Control mapping on Xbox One controller is broken, is the only negative. It continually resends the buttons, making the game unplayable. It seems like it would be a fun game if my controller actually worked. Refund requested. Look again if they release a patch. So, take that as a buyer beware. Hmm. And everything else is recommended. Yeah, this is going to be a tough choice on this one. Let's see, 18 hours of single gameplay, open world puzzle platformer gameplay with multiple endings, 16 hours filled with caves, temples, and portals to other dimensions, weather system, 10 boss fights, gobs of hidden secrets, easter eggs, and cameos, enhance your abilities with hats, create and share custom player skins, new game plus mode. Hmm. I think this is one I'd want to risk it for. Like, the animation sort of lacking, but just a little bit. And if it can give me a 2D version of something like Wind Waker, which is kind of what it seems like they're tr it's trying to do, 
This one might be worth checking out. How much is it? Let's ask. $9.99? Probably not worth that. Like, I'm a very cheap gamer, if people haven't recognized that. I really only want to pay $5 for anything short of a complete AAA game. Um, I wish I could play this. But I'm one short. Hmm. Let's see. The Smithsonian American Art Museum is calling for indie devs uh, in a yearly ev event that celebrates game culture and the work of indie game developers. They're looking for submissions to the museum's fourth annual SAAM arcade. Uh, let's see. It's a good opportunity for devs to get their games in front of people and receive playtesting feedback as well as the potential of have their work showcased at the Smithsonian. The program is part of the museum's ongoing mission to study video games as part of a national visual culture and the evolution of video games as an artistic movement. Hmm. Just play that and that does nothing. Um, Sam Arcade is focusing on the theme of game spaces this year as connecting ideas that link video games to art architecture and museum as a space for discovery and engagement. Uh, interested developers should check the full list of requirements for, for applying here. Let's look. Let's see what the requirements are. Um, Games that make interesting use of space, board and level design, which are the these types design as a standard feature of the game. Games that transform the real world spaces in which they're played. Games that are inspired by a strong community of social space. I don't know how you would particularly translate. Hmm. Wow, that didn't work at all. Oh, that sucked. That was the worst card. Well, there's nothing really too crazy on that list, though. It seems like anybody who makes a, makes a game could probably argue their game fits those three rules. Kerbal Space Program is making a has a making history expansion, bringing Mission Builder next month. Uh, probably not enough though. Like Kerbal Space Program has had some major problems uh, ever since they kind of fired everybody that knew how to make a game there, and they they released it as a 1.0 when it in my opinion, didn't explain itself. Man, we are not getting anywhere. It's, it's been an hour and nothing's been accomplished other than covering the news. Like, it's ridiculous. It, this is a great example yet again of why I am never too pleased with Hearthstone. Like, this stupid tavern brawl has to get done not only on my main account but on my uh on my uh, european account i can't even cheat it because my secondary account doesn't have a enough of a level to play tavern brawl uh once that's done i could play the secrets and i can play the dungeon run and I want to play the dungeon run, so that's what I'm going to do next time. Uh, it, I still have a ton of tabs open, so there must be more news. That's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me, 
gift me a Steam game. That works a lot better than showing ads. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.